wildlife anglers, what we're trying to do is spend each episode showing the best of the footage that we've been able to get. In our first season, we're gonna show cougar footage from a film we made called Cougar Crossings. And what we're gonna do just to make it interesting at the beginning and end of each show is show you what we're doing here at our next location for an upcoming film about wolves. And that's why we're here. So you can see behind the scenes exactly what we do as we do it, getting ready for that. For the animals that we work with, the journey to the big screen starts here, where all the animals are well cared for and kept safe. It's important to start getting the animals used to a human presence at a very young age, and at the same time, make sure that the animals are able to preserve their natural instincts and behavior, which we want to capture on film. They are very sharp. <laughs> must always remember they are wild animals, like he wants to bite, he want, part of the play in, it is to, in an animal is to eat, so it's part of their thing, they're attacking, they're, they're, their play is part of their attack. You gotta make sure that you don't, at least for me, you wouldn't you ever stick your, your hand in the bear's mouth because that automatically teaches them to bite, yep. and that fighting is a game. And fighting is not a game, is it? Uh, right, right little guy? Working this closely with animals, you get to know them both as a species and individually. This helps us to understand the misconceptions people have about them. Wolves are normally very shy. You gotta kinda hang out for a while and allow them to come check you out. Guys, if you try and approach a wolf, they're much more timid than the movies say. They don't actually confront you unless you confront them or surprise them. Usually they'll go running the other way. So if you use a camera around animals, it's really important you keep still and you lay low and you be as least distracting as possible. This is the one that's gonna have the uh, puppies for our show. Well, let's go and check out some more animals. It's always best to handle animals not by directly dealing with them, but by actually coming at them sort of sideways. And you kind of rub against them, and they'll come rub against you. Watch this. See, kind of rubbed her bum against me. Now she's coming around. That's what they do too. They approach their other species by rubbing against each other. Usually if you look at another species eye to eye, it's only humans that do that. And it, we've gotten used to it, and if anything, we think we need to do it. But most animals find it uh, conflictive. It kind of breeds hostility. This is especially true when dealing with predators like Levi, an adult male cougar. Good to see ya. Hey. See how affectionate they are? It's quite amazing. It's hard to believe that they can kill people. But that they can do. It's a myth to think that they do it all the time. It's the opposite. They only do it when we get in their face. We surprise them, or if they're sick or young, looking for new territory. For the most part, though, they're just great, beautiful animals trying to survive just like us. The last time we worked with Levi was making our film Cougar Crossings. He guest starred in a story about two orphan cubs. We are finally going to get the cougar cubs after six years of blood, sweat, and tears. We're going to grab Chaos and Roxy, our, our stars, our, our cast for this incredible film we're making. For the last few months, Roxy and Chaos have lived at the Greater Vancouver Zoo. Just step in here for a second. That'd be best. Yeah. Cougars, also known as mountain lions, pumas, and panthers, start life weighing as little as a pound, but will grow up to eight feet long and weigh 220 pounds. Okay, now let's put it this way for now. Okay. This will be Roxy and Chaos's first trip back to their native surroundings as we take them high into the Rocky Mountains for the first day of shooting and the beginning of our great adventure. Okay guys, we'll have a nice trip home, okay? Nice and smooth, I promise. By 
snowcat, our crew arrives at our first location near the top of Mount Seymour. Our guest star, Levi, stretches his legs after the long ride up to this closed set. The crew sets up for the first shot as a bank of clouds roll in. Um, any kind of filter on this thing or no? I think we got it. I think we got it. <laughs> we got it. Go, yeah. go. God, you hate the snow, yeah. man. We couldn't ask for anything. That's great. What? We're now ready for Levi's close-ups. The crew becomes still and silent so as not to distract Levi. His trainer, Tracy, feeds a meat on a stick to evoke emotions and movements that are real and natural. This takes a lot of time and film to get it right. You want it? Good boy. Good boy. High level? <laughs> By the end, we work up to his most intense behavior and we're reminded just how dangerous they can be. Tracy uses encouragement and certain movements of the stick to create specific reactions. Of course, Levi always gets a well-deserved reward in the end. That was great, that one, eh? With the first shot in the can, the crew moves to our next location, followed by Levi. <laughs> when we get there, we have a little time to have some fun with John, our director of photography. This is uh, John Drake, our VOP. There we go. You're off to the side of oh. Just a one hide. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Okay, so, so far, John is winning the contest in the funniest hat like category the so gotta, with uh, the pumpkin head. Pumpkin That's head. the one up and chip there. I got to go up up for Peter Pumpkin yeah. Head. Yeah. Our second setup is a running sequence, which we designed to show the speed, power, and aggression of North America's biggest wildcat. Hey, so, uh, Just as a reminder, guys, all the white snow beyond the tracks, hot set. Working with animals can be a challenge at the best of times. But when your star is a 160-pound cougar, you don't get many chances for retakes. John rehearses the camera move until Tracy thinks Levi is set to perform. Why? Tracy reassures Levi one last time, and with him standing by in his cage, the camera focus is checked and the lens wiped clear of snow. Speed. Love and take one. Mark. Mark. But as with any film shoot, your talent can be temperamental. After a few resets and some coaxing from his trainer, Levi finally comes through with a great performance. Later that afternoon, the snowcat arrives with Roxy and Chaos for a scene with them and Levi at this cliff. Keep it level, keep it level, level. Let it down. Oh, it's okay, baby. Shakes. After letting the cubs rest from their trip uphill, we move them in their cages closer to set. Hey, guys. Constant interaction with animals is key to gaining their confidence. Everyone's attention. Wait, wait, hold it. What we're about to do is the first time the, the cougars have been out, the first time they're being filmed. So I want everyone to be absolutely quiet, absolutely still. And anyone who's not working on set is back and sitting down and absolutely motionless. 
So we'll take the cages right to the edge. Then we'll take put them on the leash, like just 10 feet away from the cages. Take them in on the leash. And then we'll let them loose and very calmly talk to them. No aggression. Just be their buddy and friend. Nobody sure. talks. So everyone's gone. And then we just get the shot and get put them away. Get their attention with the food. And then just drop the pieces, like get their attention. And, just, and, then, and then they'll look around for a while looking for more if we do it at the same time, right? Yeah. And they'll look and look. And, okay. Mm -hmm. As the camera team moves into shooting position, Graham readies Roxy and Chaos to be moved up the slope and on their marks. Okay, so chances are when they're released, they're gonna come towards camera. This shot captures the playful and inquisitive nature of cougar cubs. It's important to establish this character trait early in the film, as it sets the stage for Roxy and Chaos's later adventures. short break, we prepare for what will be our most challenging shots of the day, an elevator lift off of a 40-foot cliff. Larry, our key grip, who is ex-military, carefully starts to build a truss way up on the face. The truss will have to be strong enough to support Glenn, the camera, and a counterweight of about 200 pounds and stick out far enough to allow Glenn to be lowered and raised in a smooth and controlled manner. It'll take several hours to complete the truss rigging, so it's a perfect opportunity to give Chaos and Roxy a chance to become more comfortable around the crew and camera and to get close-ups of the cats. with wildlife, you never know what's going to happen next. Just letting the animals be themselves can often lead to some of the best footage and most rewarding moments in the entire film. Look at this, 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 With the truss nearing completion, there are still a few details that need to be worked out, like how to get the cats into position on the cliff. Human footprints in the snow may not show up that much from the side, but when shot from above, it could taint the scene. With the final test of the rigging complete, the main camera crew gets ready to shoot. Larry helps Glenn wear the elevator harness properly for his long ride in the saddle. Depending on the cub's mood, limited attention span, and any unforeseen difficulties, Glenn could be suspended for up to an hour or more. With the camera team in position, there's still one critical detail. With all three cats in the scene at once, there's concern about the safety of the cubs. In the wild, adult male cougars are typically very hostile towards cubs, and the challenge with this scene was how to show that without putting Roxy and Chaos in jeopardy. Levi is watched closely by his trainer who is off camera. 
sound, camera, and action. These elevator shots will be a highlight of the film. As a mother cougar grooms herself, her two young cubs explore the terrain around their den. They are all unaware of a tomcat nearby. Adult males will kill cubs to prevent future competition for food, territory, or the attention of the mother. Once ranging from Argentina to Alaska, cougar were the most widespread mammalian species in the Western Hemisphere. U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt may have described our instinctive fear of the big cats when he referred to cougar as the lord of stealthy murder, facing his doom with a heart both craven and cruel. Now, the last few healthy numbers of cougar exist along the Pacific coast of North America, from California to Western Canada. The world's most dense cougar population lives on Vancouver Island, off the rugged shores of Canada's British Columbia. The mother cougar chases the tomcat away from her cubs, and in fact will run off with them. To keep him away, she must leave and risk abandoning her cubs. To allow him near, would put the cubs themselves at risk. Cougar are getting hungrier because natural food supplies are dwindling. In making cougar crossings, we wanted to show the journey of two cougar cubs from a mountaintop to a small town. This involved setting up temporary compounds in many locations. You always do a little walk around before you go. I already checked the engine and stuff. In our next film, we're taking a more intimate look at how a cub explores its new territory. And in this case, we're building one large set for a wolf pup. Oh, this is always the best part of this business, is getting on the road. Today, the road takes us up into the country, north of Calgary, Alberta. I got my lucky cowboy hat on. Here, in the middle of the prairies, in an area once inhabited by wolves, is where we will set up the hilltop compound to safely raise the wolf pup. If we use the camera right at the right angles, we can get some real nice vistas and sunsets. No one will ever know we're in the middle of farmland. Besides making our film here, we hope our hard work will let us give back to nature by leaving a natural home for wildlife after the shoot is wrapped. Even in here, out of the, well, where's the best, least windiest? This sandstone ledge will make a great location for our den. It's soft enough to carve it out, but strong enough to provide ample protection from the elements as the wolf grows up. The trick will be too doing it so that the water doesn't catch in there and the flood them out. You know, it's very important to document cougars and wolves. And because it's so hard to see them in their natural habitat, we have to do things like this, create a natural surrounding so that we can actually watch their intimate behavior and learn from it. And by studying them, we'll understand more about what we can do to live with them and to help them survive in this planet. In the next episode of Wildlife Wranglers, we capture more breathtaking images on film and continue working with the cubs as they descend cautiously past a waterfall and into a populated valley. The art of wildlife filmmaking plays an important role in keeping an eye on the health of the ecosystem and stimulating action to sustain it. If wildlife survives, we survive.